أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ladies and gentlemen peace be upon you all as you all know my name is Shaib Abdullahi uh, sorry for the uh, late coming uh, just about 10 15 minutes late due to the kids as you all know when you have kids you know the burden involved so <clears throat> i seek refuge with allah against the accursed devil woman ahsana qawlan min man da'a ila allah wa amila salihan wa qala inna li min almuslimin and who is better in speech than one who invites to allah and act righteous and says indeed i am of the Muslims, uh, let me know if you can hear me sounding clearly. Hazi sabili adu ilallah ala basiratin ana wa mani tabani wa subhanallahi wa ma'ana min al mushirikin. This is my way I invite to Allah by perception. I and whoever follows me and glory be to Allah for I am not among the idolaters. Yeah, thank you. Al Majaz. <coughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So al haqqu min rabbikum al haqqu min rabbikum fa man sha'a fal yu'min wa man the truth is from your lord so whoever wills let him believe and whoever wills let him disbelieve uh, nobody is forced we are all entitled to our own beliefs right uh, just like the messenger was asked to tell the disbelievers qul ya ayyuhal kafirun uh, la abudu ma ta'budu at the end of the chapter, he says, Lakum dinakum waliyadin. Right? But if somebody says you are lying, God says, Edu ila sabili rabbika bil hikma wal mawizatul hasanat wa jadiluhum bil lati hiya ahsan. So it's always beneficial to have a dialogue or debate to in order to establish the truth. Nadira kina kuwa. Bagya ki magana sanu sanu. Oh. Aha. So. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. So when establishing the truth, when it has to do with the truth, you tell a person and he says you are lying. The only way to establish the truth is to have a dialogue or debate. But I don't see why people are still running away, always standing far away and throwing stones. You know, you cannot be living in a glass house and cast a stone to somebody who lives in a metal house. You are causing a havoc. You know, so my duty is always to deliver the truth to the people and I ask for one thing. Anybody out there says I'm lying, I only ask for a dialogue face to face. Simple. Yeah. Uh, yeah, salam, brother. Uh, brother Dawood Shafi. You're welcome. Uh, salam, Article Islam. Yeah, salam, uh, brother Mood Hussein. Welcome you all. So let's discuss uh, the month of Ramadan. Uh, let's discuss Ramadan. But before I go in to explain anything, first of all, when you take Quran chapter 17 verse 36, God says, Among the wisdom God has given us, He says, Do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. Right? Indeed, the hearing, the eyesight, and the mind, all those will be held accountable, or all those are responsible thereof. Right, so you need to be responsible when you are listening to something concerning the religion, the deen. Right, you don't just get up and do what you see majority doing. It's 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 dead dangerous. You don't do that. It's 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 totally wrong to do to follow the majority when you have no idea why they are doing this or what they are doing. Right. So Quran chapter seventeen verse thirty six says, Just because some people said today is Ramadan. You have to start, then you just start. No, it doesn't work that way. No, right? According to the Arabian calendar, yes, today we are in Ramad the month of Ramadan. But there is a way to notice, to spot that the time is up, to start your, you know, uh, the siyam. There is a way to know. Uh -huh. So you don't just follow the majority because they said today is starting. No, it doesn't go that way. What was the signal? How did you know it has started? Remember, you live in a different country, different continent. You don't have, always have to go with the flow with other continents. That's not how it goes, right? So today I'm here to break it down, explain to you, and then give room for questions and answers so that people can get uh, enough elaboration on such delicate topic, right? 
So Quran chapter 17 verse 36 tells us not to pursue that of which we have no knowledge. So as a believer and you believe in the Quran, you can't be following something you don't know. You need to have knowledge in before you practice it or you, before you follow it. So that's why you have the hearing, the eyesight and the mind. The mind is to help you to what? Break things down in order to what? Succumb to it or digest it. Right. So when you go to Quran chapter six verse one hundred and sixteen, he says, "Wa intitu akthar man fil arud yudlu ka ansabil lai." Then he says, "In the tabiuna illa zanna wa in whom illa yakhrosun." He says, "If you obey most of those on earth, they will mislead you from the way of God." This this raises an alarm. It rings a bell of alarm in your head. God says, "If you obey most of those on earth, they will mislead you from the way of God." Hey, salam salis. They will mislead you from the way of God. Then God says what? They only assume. Because they are only following assumption. They assume. Oh, it's the month of Ramadan. Ramadan is starting today. Yes, yeah, Saudi Arabia says we should start today. So we are starting. Based on what? What, what do you mean? You understand? If Saudi Arabia is praying at 1 o'clock, do you also pray at 1 o'clock? So if Saudi Arabia says they are starting, does that mean necessarily mean you should start? No, that's not how it happens. You are a Muslim and you are a believer of the Quran. You need to investigate things before you move on. Quran chapter 49 verse 6 tells you somebody who is a Farsic, who you don't trust to be a, a believer, a good person, brings you a news you should investigate. You don't just take it and then follow it. So this is why chapter 17 verse 36 tells you do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. So the burden is rest on you, not on somebody else, right? So this is where you need to use your intellect. According to the Quran, if you don't have knowledge on something, you don't need to practice it. And you are not going to be held accountable by God. Yes, he told you that. Do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. Right? Quran chapter 27 verse 84. On the day of judgment, God will question people for practicing or rejecting something they don't have knowledge about. Yes, he will question you, hold you accountable for it. For practicing or rejecting something you don't have knowledge right so this is why there's a duty upon us as believers to what seek knowledge before we pursue whatever we want to do so you cannot be a doctor without pursuing knowledge or seeking for knowledge you cannot be a mechanic without seeking for knowledge i cannot be doing lectures on the quran without studying the quran do you see how it works so when you call yourself a certain uh, uh, title you need to be qualified for it. You need to have knowledge in that aspect. You don't just get up out of ignorance and say, I'm a Muslim, I'm a believer, and this is what I'm doing. No, 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 no. What if the devil is leading you astray? You cannot just get up and do what you see, you see your parents doing. What if they are being led astray? God says in chapter 2, verse 170, uh, 170, Wa iza lahu ma anzal Then they say what? Then they say what? Then they say what? Then God says, What if the parents did not understand anything? No, were they guided? What if your fathers did not understand anything? No, were they guided? What if? So it raises an eyebrow in order for you to think and say, Oh, wow, I need to study by myself and verify things. Because what if I'm being lied to? So we are in a generation whereby medics uh, will come and say their view, scholars will come and say their view, and the majority are just like sheep, listening and then following. Government says, one, we are just like sheep. We take it, we follow it. They say, come and vaccinate yourself. We take it, we do it without questioning. What if you are being injected poison in your body? Do you see? So this is why God tells you in chapter 17, verse 36, do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. So anything you have to pursue as a wise and intellectual person, you need to have knowledge thereof. If you don't have knowledge in a step aside, don't, don't practice it. Because if you ask a question, why did you do, even God questioning you on the day of judgment, I ask you, why did you fast on this day? Uh, God, uh, because I saw Saudi Arabia doing it. So I also did it. Are you dumb? Are you dumb? When you went to the exams hall to write your exams, did you actually write what you studied or did you just write by copycatting somebody? Then how can you be a qualified uh, 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 earner of a degree? How? 
do you see what I'm what I'm try, uh, trying to explain to you? Good. So Quran chapter six verse one hundred and sixteen is telling you do not if you obey most of those on earth they will mislead you from the way of God because they only follow assumption they don't know what they are doing. This is God talking. This is not me talking. I'm only reinstating what God says, right? Now, so by here be the case, God being merciful and gracious has given us a book, which is a clarification for all things, but for who? So let's go and find out. Chapter 16, verse 89 says, وَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابِ It's talking to Muhammad, alayhi salam. وَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابِ تِبِيَانًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ he didn't say to bayina li kulli shayin. He didn't. It's not talking to the prophet to explain everything. He says tibiyana, talking about the kitab. So the kitab is to stand as a clarification for all things. But for who? For who? Tibiyana li kulli shayin. Wa hudan wa rahmatan wa bushra lil muslimin. So if you claim you are a Muslim, that is the book wherein there is no doubt. Zalik al kitabu la rayb fihi hudan lil muttaqin. Then at the same time. That same book is to serve as a clarification for all things. Do you get the point? This same book God gave to Muhammad is to serve as a clarification. Now, when we say something is clarification, it comes from the word tibiyana comes from the word bayan. Huh? Bayan. Like to clarify something, to give you what? Elucidation, clarification, to make something clear for you. That is the purpose of the book given to Muhammad But it is only to make things clear for a Muslim. Quran chapter 16 verse 89. Check it for yourself. Write it down. Check it for yourself. The book is to make things clear to only, only I repeat, to a Muslim. When somebody it is not a Muslim, things cannot be cleared for him in the Quran. No. And when I mean a Muslim, go to chapter 27 verse 81. Yeah, God says you cannot guide the blind from their error. Hmm? Uh, and they are Muslims. So only a Muslim uh, can hear what is being said from the verses of God. Because he believes in it and he's a Muslim. Do you see the point? So since he's a Muslim, he gets the clarification from the book because he knows the book clarified things for him. That is the point. So Quran chapter 5 verse 101, it says, Ya amanu, la an ashiyaa in tasukum. Wa in tas'alu anha hina Quran he says, oh, you who have believed, do not ask about things. If, if manifested to you, will distress you. But if you ask about things while the Quran is being revealed, then it shall be made clear to you, shall be manifested to you. Do you see the point? Yeah, uh, Salam, uh, brother Abdul Salam. Uh, salam. Uh, fr salam, bro, from... Bakari, okay, Bakari. Salam, sister Awa Bashir. Yeah, you're welcome. Yes, yes, Ali Snaganka. Salam. Okay. Uh huh. So, if you ask about the things while the Quran is being revealed, it shall be made clear to you. Just like today, I'm here, God willing. I'm giving. I'm going to give the chance for question and answers. You can ask question pertaining to the Quran. Don't come and ask me questions which has nothing to do with the Quran. Do you see the point? And <clears throat> like I said, since you are a Muslim, God has given you a book which stands to be a clarification for all things. That is, as a Muslim. When we say the book is a clarification for all things, it doesn't mean the Quran is here to explain to you how to, uh, how to use a laptop or how to use a mobile phone. No, God didn't create a mobile phone for you. Go to the company who created the Nokia phone to tell you how it's been used, the manual. But since God... The religion belongs to God. The fasting, siyam, belongs to God. Salat belongs to God. Hajj belongs to God. Anything you do in Islam belongs to God. He has to clarify for you. That's the simple logic here. He is the boss. So he has to clarify how things go. You don't go to other bosses to explain their views. That is not how it works. Do you see the point? Good.
Now, so by me quoting chapter 17, verse 36, chapter 6, verse 116, and chapter what? 16, verse 89, is to head you to prepare your mind to the clarification we get from God according to the Quran. So to top it all, when you go to chapter 38, verse 29, God says, Kitabun anzal nahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabbaru ayatihi wa liyatazakkar ulil albab. Right? It is a blessed book which we have revealed to you. Right? So you can say that Kitabun is mubarak. Kitabun mubarak. Just like some, but some people say Ramadan mubarak. If you say Kitabun mubarak, it's no problem. If you say Ramadan mubarak, it's no problem. It means, the word mubarak means blessed. Right? We are only saying it in Arabic. So a blessed Ramadan month month of ramadan there's nothing so if somebody ha wishes you and say hey ha uh, uh, blessed ramadan or happy ramadan there's nothing illegal about it there's nothing unlawful about it you can respond no problem with that right so kitabun anzal nahu ilayka mubarakun liyatabaru ayati wa liyatazakar ulil albab it is a blessed book which we have revealed to you a blessed book which we have revealed to you Right. So this is a kind of book you read to get to, to, to benefit from the blessings, blessings of that blessed book, because there is a blessed book already. So whoever is uh, uh, daring to that such a book will have blessings following him, of course. Uh, yeah. Salam. Uh, Fanta B. Black. You're welcome. You see. So chapter 38, verse 29 says he has revealed a blessed book. Uh, salam, brother Mufasir. Long time. He has revealed to us uh, a blessed book. Then he says, Liyadabaru ayati, so that they may contemplate its verses. The verses of the Quran is supposed to be contemplated because why? Because God says, Tibiyana li kulli shay. Chapter 16, verse 89, it is a clarification for all things. The book is to serve as a clarification for all things concerning what God asks us to do. Yes. Only a damned ass or a jackass or a bubble-headed person will say the Quran doesn't clarify anything because he hasn't studied it yeah so don't be surprised Quran chapter 25 verse 44 tells you do you think that most of them listen or reason he says they are just like livestock and even livestock are better than them because they are far astray than the livestock yeah because some livestock when they get up they know what to do do you see the point good so Quran chapter 38 verse 29 prepares our mind to let us understand that the book needs contemplation. We need to reflect on the verses. We don't just get up and say, oh, God says this. I can only find a clarification in Sahih Bukhari. Are you nuts? Did Sahih Bukhari meet God of the Prophet? Right? So how can somebody who came 200, over 200 years after the Prophet, he's the one going to explain the book of God? Are you okay? Now, <clears throat> So all these four verses I quoted was to prepare your conscience to what I'm about to deliver, right? It's to prepare your mind. Chapter 17, verse 36. Do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge, right? That is Quran, chapter 17, verse 36. Chapter 6, verse 116. If you obey those, most of those on earth, they will mislead you from the way of God. That is the second one. Then chapter 16, verse 89. So the book is to serve as a clarification for all things. At the end of the verse, it says, Lil Muslimi, for the Muslims, not for everybody. <laughs> it doesn't say Lil, lil Al Sunnah, or Lil Tariqat Tijaniya, or Lil Hamadiya, or Lil uh, Sufiya, or uh, Wahhabiya. <laughs> no, Lil Muslimi. <laughs> so the Prophet himself, chapter 27. Mm -hmm. Verse 91 to 192, he says, mm -hmm. So the Prophet himself was a Muslim and he believes that the book is a clarification for all things. Yeah, good. So now, <clears throat> when we say the sacred months, mm -hmm. uh, the sectarians will tell you four months, but then sarcastically, they don't have Ramadan among the four sacred months they claim. But ask any sectarian Muslim out there. Ask him, is a Ramadan a holy month, a sacred month? He will affirm and tell you yes. And out of the hypocrisy, he will tell you Ramadan is the holiest month in Islam. Really? Is it? 
<laughs> How come when we check the Sakr Ashurul Hurum, Ramadan is not part of it? How? How come? You claim God gave us 12 months. Out of the 12 months, there is four holy months. That is sacred months. Ashurul Hurum. So how come these four sacred months, huh? according to your book, Sahih Bukhari, Ramadan is not part of the four sacred months. And then your scholars are going around telling us Ramadan is the holiest month in Islam. Is the brain working? You have football players, four football players. Hmm? Then you tell me these four football players are the best. But then, since you are talking about the best, when you have to talk about the greatest player on earth, you don't have, out of the four, you don't have one inside. You say the best of all time. But if you are talking about the greatest of all time, you didn't include that greatest of all time among the four best players of all time. How? How? I, I can't think far on this. Logic doesn't reason with this. No wonder the Hadith is telling people not to use logic in Islam. So that you may use reasoning. You may use reasoning. Afala takilun. Use reasoning. Afala takilun. Use reasoning. And then you tell me the four sacred months in Islam. Ramadan is not part of it. But yet, if we ask your scholars, is Ramadan a holy month, a sacred month, you say yes. How? How? Does it make sense at all? Does it make sense? Who is this jackass? He said, Papa, Papa Mamudu, my bro, that's not the meaning of that ayat. Which ayat did I quote? <laughs> Which ayat did I quote? Which ayat are you talking about? Are you talking about the one I quoted in chapter 12, verse 2? <laughs> if, if, if God asks you, Afala <laughs> Takilun. What is the meaning of akal? Takilun. To reason. Is it not use logic? Is reasoning not using logic? So that you may use reasoning. To use reasoning. I can, I, oh my God. <sighs> Sahih Bukhari followers. They have problem. Ladies and gentlemen. The sectarian Muslims, I don't call them Muslims even. The sectarians will tell you that the four holy months in Islam, uh, according to them, Sahih Bukhari, they have four. And thus, these four, they don't have Ramadan among the four. This is nuts. I'm serious. It is nuts. If you ask their scholars, is Ramadan a holy month? They will say yes. Is it a sacred month? They will say yes. They will even tell you it is the holiest month in Islam. Still, I can't reason with this. And then if you give me the four holy months in Islam, I say mention them for me. You mention without Ramadan again. How? Damn it. Now, when we say Siyam, you can find Siyam in chapter 4 verse 92, meaning when somebody kills somebody by mistake. If you kill somebody by mistake, the, one of the uh, expiation, that is the ransom, the compensation you do, if you cannot actually meet the requirements, that means you have to fast uh, two months consecutively. <laughs> look, at, look at this guy, pa Papa Mahmoud, he says, that four months every human being has his his our four months mine is different yours is different well you are not a sahih bukhari follower so find a place to sit <laughs> yeah <laughs> then again chapter 5 verse 89 oath penalty like when somebody swears an oath huh? when somebody swears an oath and he breaks the oath 
uh, according to God, you can you have to fast three days. You have to do siyam three days uh, as an expiation. That is compensation for that. And chapter 2, verse 196, when you go to the Hajj and you are not able to do the animal sacrifice, uh, you have to fast three days at the Hajj. Then when you go back to your country, you fast seven days, making it ten days. Kamila, Asharatul Kamila. So ten days, that is siyam, right? So when we say siyam, we are going to find out what... Uh, it means right now then that is the way we, we, we can classify it as, as hajj penalty maybe 10 days huh? so when we say ramadan what is the actual meaning of ramadan right we want to find the meaning of ramadan as a word right what is ramadan now always in arabic one of the things you to, you, know, you need to do in order to find certain meanings you need to know the root words and word forms on certain words so that it can help you to come by uh, the concept of what you're doing right so for instance if you say ramadan you need to know the root word huh? root word can be ramada or ramida always arabic you get three letter uh, words three letter words to form a word so then you can deduce a meaning of something. Huh? So we have Ramida or Ramada. Uh, so from Ramada or Ramida, when Arabic Arabians use the word Ramida, remember, Arabic language was already there before Quran was revealed. But the difference is God, God raised the Arabic language to perfection. That is the difference. So just like today, when you go to the Arabian countries, they are already speaking Arabic, but none of them speak the Arabic dialect, uh, the, the dialect of the Quran. None of none of the countries in the world, no Arabian country on earth, speaks the dialect of the Quran. No, they don't have any. Some of the scholars will tell you, oh, is it Qurayshi Arab? No, it's not Quraysh. God never says Qurayshi. No, you understand. Uh huh. So. When we say Arabic, Arabic has already been there, or Arabs have already, already been there before the Quran came. So they have choice of words. They have words that they use. But mind you, anytime people have a spoken language, it is always different from a written language. So the written language today, the Arabs are proud of, is what we call Fusha. Now, God never mentioned a word called Fusha in the Quran to say Arabic of the Quran is Fusha. God never said that. They give it a name. They, the Arabs, they give it a name Fusha. They created Fusha. Now, Fusha has been created in such a way to become an official language for the Arabians to use, official written language. But current Arabians are using the modern standard Arabic. So you can meet an Arabian who doesn't understand the Quran. It is normal. Most of them. You meet an Arabian person who speaks Arabic for all his years, but he doesn't understand the Quran. You, you get the point. So this is why God sends Muhammad as a messenger. Who Allah zibasa fil ummiyina rasulan minhum yatlu alayhim ayatihi wa yuzakihum wa yuallimuhum al-kitaba wa al-hikma. So if they were already learned, they wouldn't have needed a teacher who has never read a, a, read a book or written a book. They wouldn't have needed a tatachi teacher. They would have taught themselves. You understand? Because there's a unique difference with the Quranic Arabic with the mainstream Arabic. There is a difference, right? But now when we go back to the word of Ramadan, mind you, according to chapter 2, verse 185, there is already a month, there was already a month called Ramadan, Sharul Ramadan, before the Quran was revealed. Because then the Arabians will have not known what uh, Ramadan is. Do you get the point? Yes, yeah, Salam, uh, Mawiyah. So when we say Ramadan, to deduce it, you get the three-letter three word, that is what? Ramida or Ramada. What does it mean? It means to burn, to scorch, to heat up something. Something which is which burns. To burn, to scorch, to heat up. Ramida or Ramada. So the same goes with, with this word. If you if you take word like insan, insan, if you break it down, you get ins. Alif, nun, and sin. Three letter words. Sin. Right? Ins. But in Arabic of the Quran, when we say ins, you are talking about a human. Still, ins, ins wal jinn. Huh? Wa ma khalaqtu ins wal jinn illa li abdun. Or wa ma khalaqtu jinn wal ins illa li abdun. So this ins is three letter word, right? But then this ins can become insan. You can see, still see the three letter words, but then the alif, huh? alif madda is added, and then the nun at the end. So insan. 
Do you see? Same goes to the word, word Rahman. Rahman, right? Now, when we say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, this Rahman, when you shorten it uh, to the three letter words, you get Rahma or Rahama or Rahima. So Rahama, Rahama, it can change to become Rahman, right? Rahman with the Alif Madda and the Noon at the end. Same goes with the word Ramadan. Uh, if you bring it in the form in order to know the meaning of the word actually, where it derives from, you get what? Ramida or Ramada. So Ramida becomes what? Ramadan. So when you are able to deduce it to the three-letter word form, that is where you can deduce the actual meaning of the word, what it means. You get the point. So when we say Ramadan, that is the scorching, the heat up or the burning. But that is not actually why we are here. That is, we are not looking for the meaning of the word Ramadan. The meaning of the word is not to lead you to, to what, what month is it. For instance, when we say January, we are in the month of what? April. Then somebody will ask you, oh, uh, April, I think in April this thing happens. That's why they call it April. No. That's not why it's called April. Do you, do you get a point? These things happen. That's why we come. Now, when you check the history form on how that word came out, it has nothing to do with why we call it that April. It's assigned to somebody's name. Do you understand? So if you want to check the meaning of the Quran this way, by going say, oh, let me find the meaning of Ramadan. Or oh, since it means burning or scorching, it means, oh, it is a summertime. No, 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 no. Go to the Surah to the Quraysh. We have Reda Tashita, it was Saif. Winter and summer is found in the Quran. So if it's about a summertime, God will have mentioned, just like he mentioned Shita, it was soif. It has nothing to do with seasonal or season. That's why God says Ramadan. No, no. You don't find meanings in such a way. Not always. Right? Good. Now, so breaking it down, why do we do Ramadan? Why do we why do we fast? We just say Ramadan. Ramadan is the name of the month, right? Like I said, the calendar was already there before God sent it because he mentioned the word Shahar, the month, right? Like I said also, our Arabic language was already in existence before the Quran was sent down. Yes. Arabic language was already in existence before the Quran was sent down. However, God only raised it to perfection. That is the difference. Because whatever comes from God is with perfection. That is the difference. Yeah, right? right? So the reason why we are to observe Ramadan is can be found in chapter 2, verse 183. Surah Al-Baqarah. Then we go to 183 to see the reason why we observe uh, the, the, the Siyam in the month of Ramadan. Right? Good. So... Chapter 2, verse 183, he says, Sharur, uh, he says, uh, Ya you are Lazina Amanu. Kutiba alaikum in Siyam, Kema Kutiba ala Lazina min Kabalikum, La Allakum Tatakun. Yeah, so the fasting, that is a Siyam. has been decreed for us or prescribed to us or written for us uh, kutiba kutiba it comes from the word kataba uh, kataba to write something now when something is written it becomes a decree it is prescribed whenever something is written it becomes a decree or what prescribed so kutiba alaykum becomes decreed for you since it has been written it's a decree so kutiba alaykum as siyam the siyam has a definite article it has a datil tarif. In Arabic, we say definite article. De, de, siyam. Kutiba alaykum as siyam. Ah, kema kutiba ala lazina min kabalikum. Right? We all know there were prophet, messengers, and whatever have you before us. They existed before us, right? So, kutiba alaykum as siyam. Kema kutiba ala lazina min kabalikum. La allakum tatakul. That is the only reason we are to observe siyam in the month of Ramadan. This is the only reason. Whoever wants to tell you, oh, God brought Ramadan so that the devil can be chained or put in prison, they are all lies. God never said in the Quran so that the devil will be arrested. It's a lie. Right? It's a lie. Uh -huh. 
So kutiba alaykum siyam kema kutiba ala lazina min kabalikum la alakum wa tatakun. Idris Yusuf, my brother, are you not fasting? No, I'm not fasting yet. I'll fast, but I'm not fasting yet. If you want to find out the reason, you can wait till the end of this program and you know. I will be fasting, but I'm not fasting yet. Yes. So ya yu alazina amanu, oh you who have believed or oh you who believe is in the plural form. Kutiba alaykum siyam kema kutiba ala lazina min kabalikum la allakum tatakun. That is the reason why we are supposed to observe the siyam, right? Good. So God says, oh you who believe. The word siyam is modern day we call it fasting. But the actual meaning here is what? Abstinence. Is abstinence. The actual meaning is abstinence. But to modernize it, people call it siyam. Uh, they call it fasting. Now, when we say fasting, fasting is only limited to what? Food and drinking. That is fast from food and drinking. But when you check the context of the Quran, siyam doesn't only involve stopping from eating and drinking. No. It doesn't only involve that. It can involve sex. It can involve any other act which can take your piousness away. Saying evil things, you understand, also can, can make you impure. So when God says, Now, this is where you have to put in mind the fasting, the, 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 the siyam, the abstinence is to make you reach piousness now remember the book itself the book is to serve as a guidance for the pious so when you check the piety in the quran you have to do a lot of things in order to reach piousness yes a lot of things hey, salam uh, brother ashraf uh, Yeah, uh, Nifi Gris says, people ask me the same questions, you don't fast, yes? Be yes, because people want you to follow the majority. Like I, when I started what I said, when you go to chapter 6, verse 116, it says, They will mislead you from the way of God, if you obey most of those on earth. So, and again, I quoted chapter 17, verse 36, do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. If you don't have knowledge of, of a something, don't pursue it. Don't do it. Wait till you know it. Then you do. Don't just follow the crowd like a sheep. Huh? Yes. Good. So now, if we deduce, oh, you who believe, the word siyam is the abstinence. Now, when we take the word siyam, some people will tell you, oh, it is in a plural form, it is in this form, it is in that form, it is in that form. Right? Uh, Abdul Salam Ali is say, is there anything wrong with those fasting today? We are we will find out today. <laughs> There's nothing wrong. Uh, because God says in chapter 2, verse 185, Faman Shahidah Listen. Faman Shahida Minkumul Shahar Faliyasum. So if Saudi Arabia think they have spotted the, the crescent. Uh, which God says, yes, aluna ke anil ahilla kul hiya mawakitu li nas wal hajj. If they think they have spotted the crescent, uh, and then they decide to start uh, the, the, the siyam, that is up to them. That is Saudi Arabia, right? So whoever is on that side or continent and he start, decided to fast, it's not, it's not bad. It's, you can fast, right? Right? So, but you should ask yourself, if you are based in the U.S., why why are you fasting because Saudi Arabia says they, they are fasting? It means you haven't put chapter 2, verse 185 into context because God says, Faman shahida min kumun shar, which means some people can shahida, you haven't shahida yet. Do you see the difference here? So I'm coming to that point. I'll explain. So abstinence is prescribed to you. The Asiyam, Quran is going to explain to us what is the Asiyam. We are not going to take any meaning from somewhere. I know some people who quote chapter 19, verse 26, talking about Maryam. They say Saum. The word there is mentioned Saum. Look, some words in the Quran are similar. Mutashabiha. It doesn't mean it's the same meaning. 
they are different. The, some verses in the Quran or some signs are similar. When we say mutashabiha, it, it didn't mean it doesn't mean sawa'a, it doesn't mean same. They are similar, doesn't mean same. So listen carefully. We have words in the Quran that can share root word with something, but that it's not the same meaning. Right? Aha, uh -huh. it's not the same meaning. Uh, I, when I gave my lectures concerning uh, uh, the, the, the Salat, uh, when we say Salah, Salah, it, it can mean to pray, to worship, to burn as well. To burn, Salah. To burn. <laughs> right? To burn. It means Salah. So, this is the root word. So, you can see they, shamed, they said, but it's not the same thing. They, are, they might be similar when you find it in the, in the verse, some words. So when you are talking about Maryam, what she did was some, this psalm was different. God actually explained the psalm was to abstain from talking. So the actual meaning of the siyam is something which, which causes you to abstain from something. It's abstinence, right? So let me help you here. So abstinence, the trait of abstaining from something. That is act or practice of refraining from from indulging an appetite so maybe you have appetite for sex you have appetite for doing bad things you have appetite for eating food you have appetite from drinking you have appetite for you understand you abstain this is what a siam is to abstain from something right so now when you deduce the reason why we do the abstinence is to make it pious because when you are fond of doing bad things and you abstain you become pious what is pious? God-fearing person. Somebody who is dutiful to God. That is a pious person. So that is the reason why we are to observe as to, to bring us closer to God in order to become pious. That is the point. So this is why a lot of people during Ramadan, you see, they become holy people. They become holy. <laughs> Sometimes you tempt, tempt them and they are like, oh, you are lucky I'm fasting. You will have seen what I will do to you. Uh -huh. So this is the, the, the spiritual euphoria surrounding that right so now when we go to chapter 2 verse 185 let's go and see what god says chapter 2 verse 185 in order to to uh, understand the context of the verses i'm about to say god says Sharu ramadan lazi unzila fihi al-quran hudan linnas then he says wa bayinati min al-huda wal furqan i will stop here for now right so god says the month of ramadan uh, yes, yes. Uh, Abdul Salam Ali is asking Sheikh, is it is it seeing the moon or getting in the month of Ramadan? Is the start of fasting or what? I'm going to explain that now. So have patience, okay? Yeah. Uh huh. So it, it is Yusuf is also saying, oh, we have seen the moon in Ghana too. Well, good luck. Then you have to fast if you have seen it. You have seen it. Don't say somebody announced it. You, did you see the moon? Because when a moon is in the sky, everybody should be able to see it, except blind people. <laughs> except people who don't have eyes. <laughs> so please, if you say you have seen the moon in Ghana, make sure it doesn't only, only appear in somebody's house. I know Ghanaians, this is what they do. To, to make it even more amuse, amusable, they, they will tell you that somebody saw that moon on the TV. Wait, let's go. Uh -huh. So God says the month of Ramadan, like I explained, there was already a month and a calendar called Ramadan before the Quran was revealed. So when God says Shahar, this is where you need to understand what the Shahar represents. And now when we say Shahar, in Arabic Shahar is month, Shahar. Like I said, Arabic language was already there before the Quran was revealed, but God actually raised it to perfection, right? So when we say shahar, a month is a unit of time used with calendars. There is no way you can have a month without a calendar. No, it's impossible to have a month without a calendar. Now remember, I'm going to hint at a point here to let you understand how did we get the word month on its own. And why do we have first, second, third, fourth, fifth day, sixth day up to the end of the month? It has to do with the moon. So let's see. A month is a unit of time used with calendars, which is approximately as long as a natural period related to the motion of the moon. 
So month, the word month has to do the, derived from the word moon. That is how we got the word month. Uh, salam, uh, John Gosh. Uh, salam, Haji Muttala Mola. We understand. So when we say month, in Arabic they say shahar. The shahar is month. Now a month has to be derived from moon, the word moon. So when we say moon, the moon is has positions, the period related to the motion of the moon. That is in Arabic, in the Quran, we say manazila. Manazila means that is how we have the first day, the second day, because it moves with crescents. It comes with the waxing crescent and the waning crescent to, to notice the beginning of the month and the ending of the month. Right? Good. So now a month is a unit of time used with calendars, which is approximately as long as a natural period related to the motion of the moon. That's where we get the month word month. Right? Month and moon are cognates. This is how they are related. So one is derived from the other. So note, researchers have deduced that the peop that people counted days in relation to the moon's phases as early as the what? Paleolithic age. That is relating to the second period of the Stone Age. Stone Age. Good. So for people who doesn't who don't know what the Stone Age is, let me help here. Now when we say Stone Age. It is the earliest known period of human culture characterized by the use of stone implements, right? So that is the Stone Age. That is when those, during those period they, they were using moon. And we can see it in the Quran. The reason why God wants us to use the moon to know the beginning of something and the ending of something. So I will explain that as time goes on. So God says the month of Ramadan is that in which the Quran was revealed. So which shows you that the people of Muhammad salam, already knew about the calendar, the shahar, called Ramadan. It has nothing to do with shita, it was saif. It has nothing to do with winter or summer as people think. Just because Ramadan comes from the word Ramida, it means, oh, hey, it means it's a summertime. It has to be summertime. And to make it to make it mean uh, like amusable, like uh, as an amusement, some people are saying, oh, it's equinox. It can happen in September. Hey, look, Muhammad doesn't know anything called September. He didn't create that calendar there. Right? He is dealing with the Arabians. And he had the Arabian calendar. Right? Just like I'm Shaib Abdullah. I was born in Ghana. We were dealing with the Gregorian calendar. So that's the month I knew before I came to study the Arabic calendar. <laughs> You understand? So if you ask me my date of birth and I give you my passport, it is Gregorian calendar. That is the calendar I knew. Similarly, Muhammad had a calendar. If he doesn't have a calendar, how does he have a date of birth? And how does he even have age? Do you get the point? So the moment you are reminiscing, you are, you are, you are remembering an event at a period of time in history, it becomes a calendar because you are dealing with dates and chronology. This is how it goes. Right. So if my date of birth changes, there will be a problem because I have a date of birth. I can never be born in two days or three days. I was born in one day and it has a date, a fixed date. Similarly goes with the Quran. Right. So God says the month of Ramadan is that in which the Quran was revealed. So the Quran was revealed in a particular month. The Arabians at that time, they knew the month. And I'll help you to know the month itself. Mm? So here was revealed as guidance for mankind. So the Quran wasn't revealed for gu as guidance for the Arabs alone. It is guidance for Anas, mankind in general. So not only Arabian has a license to the book. No, 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 no. No Arabian can stand in front of me, Shaib Abdullah, and say they have the rights to the book. It's a lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lie. Quran chapter 26, verse 197. God says even the scholars of children of Israel knew the book. They knew the Quran. Yes, so you don't you don't need a license from an Arabian to, to go closer to the Quran. But however, it will help you if you get to study some basics in Arabic language from the Arabs. Yes, it will help. But it doesn't necessarily mean they have the key to the Quran. If you get what I mean. Good. So now the month of Ramadan is that in which the Quran was revealed as guidance for mankind, as well as proofs of the guidance eh? and the what al furqan Now, this is the important part. So this is purposely why the Quran was revealed in the month of Ramadan. And so it is to help you as a guidance for mankind and then to do what? To give you proofs of the what? Huda. Remember, chapter 61 verse 9 says, Huwa allazi arasala rasulahu bil huda wa deen al-haqq. 
God sent Muhammad alayhi salam as a messenger to mankind. Huh? Because he says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Now when the word arsalna came, the word arsala, when it comes, it has to do with risala, rasala, a message from God. So, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ When we say alamin, we are talking about all people. That is anas, all people in general. So here, شَارُ الرَّمَدَانِ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ هُدًا لِلْنَاسِ Now this Quran was sent to Muhammad alayhi salam. Chapter 20, verse 2 to verse 3. ما أنزلنا عليك القرآن لتشكى إلا تذكرة لمن يخشى. So لمن يخشى can be any other person, can be American, can be Ghanaian, can be Chinese, can be European, can be any other person. لمن يخشى, right? So you all are entitled to take your guidance from the Quran according to chapter 39 verse 41 of the Quran as well. The Quran was sent to mankind in truth. Yes, the book come to mankind in truth. No, so as guidance. For mankind as well as proofs of the guidance and the al furqan Now, when we say guidance, that is why God says in chapter 2, verse 2, Zalik al kitab la rayba fihi hudan lil muttaqin. And al furqan can be found in chapter 25, verse 1. God says the Al-Quran to Muhammad in order to be liyakuna lil alamina nazira, in order to be a warner, right, to mankind. Now, so now this is where the interesting part comes. Then God says, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الْشَهَرِ Now, when you check the Arabic arrangement of the word shahar, you see it has a datal tarif. For people who have studied grammar, it has a datal tarif. In Arabic, that is in Nahu, that is a datal tarif. And then this is in English, a definite article. Now, whenever something is definite, this is where you have to circulate it, surround it, and then contemplate, reflect. Why is it a definite article? So, for instance, if I'm talking and I say the boy, or I say the girl, or the man, which means you know what I'm saying. So when God says, "Faman shahida min kumu shahar," a shahar is definite. It's a definite man. It, it's it's unchangeable. It has to be definite. You can't change it because people already know it. So God says, "Faman shahida min kumu shahar faliyasmu." Then you have to observe the siyam. But now, why did God classify the statement by saying "faman shahida min kumu shahar," which means not everyone among all people will observe, will witness at the same time? I just gave you the definition of a month. A month is related to a moon. That's why we have first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day. That's why we call it month. That's why first, second, third. Fourth day, they put the TH. Fourth, fifth, sixth. It keeps going by positions. Right? So I'm going to break it down for you to understand why some people can start fasting today and some people can start fasting tomorrow. It's, it doesn't have to always be the same day just because Saudi Arabia tells you it is today. Let people who are in Saudi Arabia start fasting today if they have seen the moon. And mind you, seeing the crescent doesn't have to be one person. Everybody can see it in the sky when it's there. Yes, yes. Some people will say, oh, what if they have to use telecom? Why? That's why God says, How do you shahida something? How do you witness something when a something is starting? If I want to be sure the month has started, I don't need to be going to calendars and checking. What if the calculation is an error? What if they made a mistake? Do you see my point? Aha. Uh -huh. So, now somebody will say, oh, how did you know that Ramadan on the calendar is right? Look, a calendar has been there before you were born. That calendar they are using is 1,400 and something years today. It, it has period of counting. You are using a Gregorian calendar. What is the year? 2021. Go with the flow and check the, from the common era it, it, it started uh, being counted. And check it till today. Right? It goes. Few days might be added, few days might be numbered, yes, but still is the calendar being used. You, do, you get, do you get my point? So now here, God says, Faman shahida min kumu asha faliyasum. Whoever among you witnesses the man, then let him what? Observe the siyam. So now, how do I know I'm in Ramadan? When I check the current calendar, if I check the Arabian calendar, it tells me I'm in it tells, it tells me today is first of Ramadan. This is what it will tell me, first of Ramadan. 
But that, how will I, what, what will make me feel that I'm in, in the month of Ramadan? I need to know something. I need to see something, to witness something that can actually make me convinced that I'm in the month. Do you get the point? So this is why God used the word, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ minkum. Not everybody will see it. Remember, the Quran was to serve as a guidance for mankind. So you can be in America, you can be in Japan, you can be in Finland. You are part of people who are to take the guidance from the Quran. So it doesn't necessarily mean because I'm in Finland, I have to follow Saudi Arabia. No, I'm following the Quran. So the Quran says, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ minkum ashar. So when I check the calendar, then I've seen this calendar. It says, oh, we are supposed to be in the month of Ramadan. But how do I know the starting of the Ramadan? How do I know that actually that Ramadan day has started? So God says, yes, aluna ka anil ahilla. The answer can be found in chapter 2, verse 189. Right? Chapter 2, verse 189. God says what? Yes, aluna ka anil ahilla. Kul hiya mawakitu linnas wal hajj. God says, when they ask you or they ask you about the crescents. Now, when we say crescent, it has to do with the new moon. Right? We have two types of crescents. We have the waxing crescent and the waning crescent. So God says, when they ask you about the crescents, say, you the messenger, say, they are timings. For the same mankind that God revealed the Quran to them, they are timings for the people. He didn't say they are timings for the Arabs. Listen carefully. They are timings for Anas and the time of what? Hajj. Because remember, if it is time for Hajj, I can be in America and I want to go to Hajj. I can be in Finland and I want to go to Hajj. I can be in Ghana and I want to go to Hajj. Listen carefully. So they ask you about the Christians. Now, to help some of you, let's see the meaning of crescent, right? Now, crescent resembling the new moon in shape. Any shape resembles the carved shape of the moon in its first quarter or last quarters. Now, when you take the moon, it appears like the letter C, like this C. That is what we call crescent. It comes. So, when you, the moment you see that crescent, it's the birth of a new moon. When you see it. So, God intentionally used the word shahida to witness. How do you bear witness? This is the word here. Perceive. To perceive something or be contemporaneous with. Then it goes again. Witness. Someone who sees an event and reports what happened. Someone who sees an event and reports what happened. A close observer can be a witness to observe something closely. You are a witness to it. So God says, Faman shahida min kumu shahar, which means not everyone who witnesses the same time. Somebody might ask, what if I'm blind? Yes, what if you are blind? Don't you have people who even buff you? Since they are buffing you, how do you know you are buffed? Because you believe them, right? God says in chapter 49, verse 6, when an immoral person brings you information, investigate it. So if you are telling me, oh, what if I'm blind? Are you blind? No. But the blind person next to you, how does he believe you? Most of the times. So if you say you have observed it, you need to prove to him and tell him, oh, there's, there's, the moon is in the sky. I can see it actually. Then he can base his belief on you because he trusts you. You have been with him. Do you understand? But when we say, Fama and Amin Kum, we are talking to the believers. Since you are a believer, the one next to you, whether he's a blind person, must, he will trust you because you are a believer. You are not a Farsic. Do you get my point? Good. So God says, Now, since we are in the month, and I want to know actually that the month has started, God says, Yes, Aluna ke anil ahilla. Now, when we say ahilla, they are the crescent, new moons. That is what signifies you that the month has started. So if Saudi Arabia claims they have seen the new moon, that is a timing for them. They have started. That is up to Saudi Arabia. It's not up to me because I have not witnessed it. Why would I start something I didn't witness? Why? Do you see? So if Ghana says they've seen it today or tomorrow, that is up to them. They start. If America says they've seen it on Thursday, that is up to them. Let them start. If Finland says I've seen it today or tomorrow, that is up to me. I start today. So let me remind you, I didn't start yet. Yeah. 
So yasaluna ke anil ahilla say kul hiya mawakitu lil nas. It didn't say mawakitu lil arab. No. Mawakitu lil nas. Listen carefully. <clears throat> so God says when we are asked about the new moons. So for instance, let's say I don't know about the, uh, about Islam. And then I asked somebody that, how did the Arabians know that Ramadan has actually started? Is it by the calendar they are just checking? Or how did they know? Then somebody will say, oh, the Arabs, they normally check the moon to know it has started. Really? They check the moon. So now God is telling me, since I'm a human being, I take my guidance from the Quran. God says, yes, aluna ka anil ahilla, kul hiya mawakitu linnas. So I'm a human being too. So I can also use it for my timings. Hmm. Yes, since it's a new moon, that's how I get to know that I can also start my fasting because I have a timing device. Do you get my point? So I will explain to you how the moon works. Now, how does the moon work? Let's go to chapter 10, verse 5 of the Quran to see how the moon works so that we can understand why it's called a month. So Surah to Yunus, verse 5. God says, Who allazi ja'ala shamsu diya'an wal kamara nooran wa qaddarahu manazila لتعلموا عدد السنين والحساب ما خلق الله ذلك إلا بالحق يفصل الآيات لقوم يعلمون. Now what does what is God telling us in that verse? What what does God intend to tell us in that verse? God says, He is the one who made the sun glow, like glow on its own as a lamp, right? And the moon as a what? Light, nuran, because the glowing lamp gives light to the moon. Right? So then it says, and estimated it in Manazila positions. It's estimated it, the moon. You look at the word. God used the word nuran, wakadarahu. He didn't say wakadarahuma or hima. No, he didn't say wakadarahuma or wakadarahima. No. He used the word wakadarahu. He's talking about the moon, not the sun. Listen carefully and learn grammar. In that verse, chapter 10, verse 5, God is not talking about the sun. He's talking about the moon. Who allazi ja'ala shamsu diya'un? Then he says, wal kamara nuran. Then he says what? Wakadarahu. He didn't say wakadarahuma or hima. No. Wakadarahu. Then he says, Manazila. So he's talking about the moon. Then he says, Litalamu ada the sinina wal hisab. In order to know the counting of years and what? The calculation, the hisab. Mm -hmm. So this is why the month becomes a cognate of the moon. Right? You use the first day, the second day, you keep counting till the moon also becomes a waning crescent. Then the month ends. So that's why we say month. Like in my country, uh, uh, we say we use the word water water in hausa language in my country when we use water water means the moon now the same water means the month because the water is to signify the month the moon same thing the the the, the asante people in my country who speak tree they will say what busum when we say busum the busum is the what the moon and when they use the word busum again it means the month do you understand? And I know most of languages in the world, they use the same criteria. So English also derived the word month from the word moon. Same, same thing. That's why when you check from history, the researcher tells you it started from the stone age. That is how the month, the name month evolved from the, the word moon. So good. So God is explaining to us how the moon functions. So God says, then he says, kamara nuran. Here, nuran. Then he says, wakadarahu. It's not talking about two things, but one thing. Wakadarahu the kamara. Because if God is talking about the sun, hmm? if God is talk was talking about the sun, I will show you something. If God is talking about the sun, he used a different attribute for the sun. And I'm going to help you to understand that. When you go to uh, Surah to Surah to Shams, when God is talking about the sun, He used a female 
feminine attribute to address to the son. Yes, if God is talking about the son, he always used a female attribute to describe the son. Yes. So I give you an example. Surah to Shams. It says, what Shamsi. Then it says, what do ha ha. At the end of what do ha ha, he used the word ha. It's a feminine attribute. It's not a masculine attribute. He didn't say, what Shamsu what do ha ha. Or what do ha he. No. What do ha ha. That's a feminine attribute. He says, and the sun and its forenoon. Ha. So this ha here signifies the sun. But when you go back to chapter 10, verse 5, when God says, Then he says, Then he says, He didn't say, Then he will be, he will be talking about the sun. You see here, then it says manazila. This manazila is the position. That's why we have first day, second day, third day, fourth day, till the month end. That is the moon ends. Do you understand my point? So God is explaining to us how the moon functions and supposed to be used. That's why God says, yes, aluna ke anil ahilla kul hiya mawaki nas wal hajj. So it is the moon as a crescent we use to know the starting and the ending. Remember, the Quran is a guidance for mankind. So don't tell me only Arabians are supposed to use this. Unless if you are a dumb person who doesn't understand the Quran. Simple. Good. Now, so chapter 2 verse 189 tells us clearly here the crescent, the function of the crescent to know the timing for mankind. So the timing, since we are dealing with God, we have to use the timing he gives to you. For instance, when you go to a company and you are working and the boss gives you tools to use, are you going to drop those tools and go and fetch your own tools to use? It will not make sense because the tools God boss gave you, that is what he wants you to use there. Then you said, boss, I don't need these tools. Let me go and get my own tools. You understand? I don't even follow uh, uh, Saudi Arabia for my hajj. Idris Yusuf, know, know a person before you judge a person. I don't follow Saudi Arabia for Hajj. You think I'm, I'm a dumbass like most of the people out there? No? No? Now, <clears throat> so we seen the classification why God says in chapter 2 verse 185, huh? Sharu Ramadan Lazi Quran Then in the middle he says, Faman Shahida Min Kumu Ashar. Ashar is a definite article. So when you when you when you witness the month, how do you witness the month? You have to use the moon to know you have actually witnessed the month by using the moon, the crescent, for the timing. So if Saudi Arabia have seen the the moon today, it could be America will see it tomorrow. You cannot see the new moon at once. And when the moon is in the sky, you don't need to have a telescope to see it. You wait for your day. You will see it. Don't rush it. When a new moon comes. I can see new moon today. You might see it tomorrow. This is how God functions it. That's why he says, "From man shahida min kum ashar." So some people might witness. Let them let them start fasting. Just because I'm drinking water today doesn't mean I'm a disbeliever. Unless if you are a dumb ass or a jackass to actually think just because I'm drinking water, you say, "Ah, why is right?" I thought fasting starts today because I'm not a dumb ass like you. You are following assumption. God says in chapter 6, verse 116, Are you just going to follow the majority just because they started fasting? Do you reason at all? Don't you know at a workplace, the boss gave everybody the time he should start working? So just because your work may started at 6, does it mean you have to start at 6? No. Use your intellect, people. Now, let's move on. <clears throat> now, some people will say, Hey, uh, why is it that the Arabs name their calendar seasonal Rabiul Awal, Rabiul this, and how come the summer goes here and, and this one goes? No, 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 ladies and it doesn't work like that. Huh? It doesn't work like that. Look, Idris Yusuf, I'm doing lectures here. Let, let, let the intellectual people concentrate. Stop asking me irrelevant questions. I'm talking about Ramadan, not Hajj. Please, please. 
if you want to learn about Hajj, come. The next topic I have concerning Hajj, you come and ask me questions, right? Salam, Brazil. Now, <clears throat> so then, some people will tell you, oh, the month of Hajj, no, this is not the right month. That is not the right month. The month is not supposed to do, be like this. I'm going to help you to know that this is the actual month. It is the actual month. It is not a fake month. I'm going to help you. And mind you, let me advise you. Stop mingling the Gregorian calendar with the Arabian calendar. You will mess things up. I hear some people saying, oh, Ramadan is actually supposed to start in September. Where did you get that from? Prophet Muhammad did that? September? Really? He gave you that? Prophet Muhammad, he did that too? Remember, he was an Arabian. So where did you get the September from? The Equinox thing for? I don't, I don't understand these people. Let, well, let me help you here. Now, to actually know that the Ramadan, the month of Ramadan on the Arabian calendar is the actual month, there is a way to cross-check. Right? So, for instance, in the Gregorian calendar, we have 12 months, right? From January to December. Then somebody's birth certificate mention a month which cannot be found on the calendar. Right? He mentioned a month which cannot be uh, found on the calendar. Right? Now, since it cannot be found on the calendar, which means the birth month he was born is wrong because it's not on the calendar. But if the birth month he was born was found on, it can be found on the calendar, then the, that big date of birth is correct. You understand? Uh -huh, it's correct. Now, this is how it goes. When you go to Quran chapter 8 verse 41, I'm going to give you a hint on how to believe and understand that the Ramadan on the calendar, Arabian calendar today is correct. I'm going to help you. Just like God says the Quran, why do they, do they then not contemplate the Quran? Had it been from other than God, they would have found numerous contradictions in the Quran. So similarly, to analyze the month of Ramadan as a calendar, I'm, I want to help you to know it is the true calendar. It is not tempered. It has not been tempered. For people who think the calendar is based on seasonal weather, who told you that rubbish? Is it God? Who told you the Arabian calendar is based on seasonal months? After God telling you, real at he was saved, Surah to the Quraysh. He, God knows what winter and summer is. He didn't tell you the Ramadan is in summer or winter. Where did you get that rubbish from? That, oh, uh, it means Ramadan means scorching. It has to be in the summertime. What? <laughs> okay. Chapter 8, verse 41. Let's see what God says. God says, and know that whatever you capture of spoils, then indeed one thief is for God and for the messenger and for the relatives, the orphans, the poor people and the wayfarer. If you believe in God and what we have revealed to our servant on the day of the criterion. Now, this is interesting. God is talking about the day of the criterion. Now, we want to know what day is that. We want to know what day was God talking about. God says, in chapter 8, verse 41, he says, In kuntum amantum billahi wa ma anzalna ala ibadina yawm al furqan. Huh? The word faraka, faraka, is to distinguish something to, you know, from wrong, from right, separate something. So God says, what? Furqan, yawm al furqan. Then he says, yawm takal uh, jam'an. That is the day the two groups they had a fight. The day of the what? Furqan. That is the day the two groups had a fight. Now God is telling the believers at that time with the prophet. God is telling them, In kuntum amantum billahi wa ma anzalna ala abdina yawm al furqan. Now the believers at his time, they knew there was a day God sent down the criteria al furqan. Raka, she is very loud. Nadira, kina kuwa. Oh. Hey. Hey. 
na rira bari kuwa na chei baki jimba gana kuo kika ya kana tablet na mba mba ki kumu titi na aboi mba mba ki kuma ya ba I'm telling her if she is loud I will seize the tablet ya ba tell her not to be loud it's too like annoying In kuntum amantum billahi wa ma anzalna ala abdina yawm al-furqan So God is telling the believers at the time of Muhammad a.s. and the prophet that if they believe in God and what God has revealed to his servant on the day of the criterion. So the day of criterion can be found in chapter 25 verse what? 1. Chapter 25 verse 1 this is what God says concerning what he said now to his servant he says tabarak allazi nazzala alfurqan ala abdihi liyakun liyakuna lil alamina nazira he says blessed is the one who revealed the what criterion now remember the criterion has a definite article alfurqan that is a definite thing God is talking about right so God says ala abdihi liyakuna lil alamina nazira so muhammad was sent as a nazir to the alamin all people right that is why the quran is here for all of us right good so now when you check chapter 8 verse 41 god was trying to raise the eyebrow of the believers telling them to remember huh, the day he sent down the criterion this al furqan to that prophet so that quran chapter 2 verse 185 he says sharu ramadan allazi unzila fihi alquran huda lin nas wal bayyinati min al huda wal wat furqan so the furqan was sent together with the quran but in gradual stages because god says wa quran an farqana li takra'u ala 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 nas ala muqthin ah the quran was separated in such a way that Muhammad revealed it in, uh, received it in stages it didn't all come down at once jumlatan wahida it came step by step right good so now god says in chapter 8 verse 41 he told the believers to remember huh? uh, if you believe in god and what we have revealed to our servant on the what on the day of the what furqan al furqan so when you go to chapter 8 verse 41 the al furqan mentioned there is a definite article as well yawm al furqan the furqan is a definite article right good so now let me help you to understand that the month of ramadan on the calendar of the arabians today has never changed it never changed it is the same ramadan i'm going to help you good so now since we know particularly that the quran chapter 25 verse 1 Muhammad received the al-Furqan from God. He is the servant of God. He received the al-Furqan and the believers at this time they witnessed it. And God says on the day the two parties met, they were going to have a fight with the disbelievers. They met. So chronologically, that means it happened on a particular day and time and it's a history which can be spotted. Remember, history, any famous event which has happened, huh, has been dated is history. Right? So the date of histories are, are are spotted. For instance, if I say September 11th, if I mention the World Trade Center and I say September 11th, everybody can remember that day, September 11th. It is a terrible day that something great happened on that day, September 11th. If you if you get what I'm I'm trying to head at. So for people who who witness the Hiroshima, huh, the Holocaust or whatever you have It has a specific date on that date such event happened. For people who notice uh, what can I say How, what example can I uh, can I give when France was attacked people not remember that day. Huh? Everybody can remember such a day. The day Donald Trump became a president is in history. People can remember that date, right? So what the Quran actually does it. The Quran is to pinpoint guidance to you in order for you to be able to pinpoint certain events in history so the quran will give you the right story yeah like idris yusuf said like may 9 in ghana there was a tragedy which happened in the history of ghana concerning a football match it is very famous so when you say may 9 people remember that 
Good. So similarly, when you come to the Quran, there is something we call the Battle of Badr. Now, I'm going to give you the narration of the Battle of Badr, but I will help you to find the dates. On that date, the Prophet received the Al-Furqan, and we were going to see the date. Is it in Ramadan? Was it in Ramadan or not? We are going to see it. Huh? So let me help you. Quran chapter 3 verse 13. There has already been a sign for you in the meeting of the two parties. Which two parties? Chapter 8 verse 41 tells you. On the day God sent the prophet the Al-Furqan. The believers know about it. That is the day the two parties met. So God says there has already been a sign for you on the meeting. Huh? For you in the meeting of the two parties. One party fighting in the way of God and another of disbelievers. Then God says, they saw them like the likes of them by the vision of the eyes. And God supported whomever he willed with his victory. The believers won. The battle of Badr is the most famous fight in history of, uh, of a religion. Right? Good. Indeed, there is a lesson in that for those of eyesight. Then, now I'm going to take you back chapter 8 verse 7 and read downwards so that you get the concept of what actually happened and when god promised you that one of the two factions will be yours and you wish that the one the other one with might will be yours because the prophet saw a dream and in that dream he saw one group which is mighty and one group which is not mighty so he wished that one group he saw in the dream will be <laughs> So he's our refuge. He's our. Aha. So he wished that one which is mighty will be for him. Now this is what happened. And when God promised you that one of the two factions will be yours, and you wish that the other one with might will be yours, but God intends to enforce the truth with his words and sever the root of the disbelievers. Verse eight, that he may enforce the truth and abolish falsehood even if the criminals disliked it verse 9 when you sought for the help of your lord thus he responded to you indeed i will reinforce you with a thousand of the angels in succession verse 10 and god only made it as good news and to reassure your hearts with it for victory is only from god indeed god is almighty and wise then verse uh yes verse uh 10 and god only made it as good news and to reassure your hearts with it for victory is only from god indeed god is almighty and wise then verse 11 then he covered you with safe drowsiness a uh, drow drowsiness from him and sent down water from the sky upon you in order to purify you with it and remove filthiness of the devil from you and to unite your heart and reinforce your foothold verse 12 then your lord in spite of the angels i am with you so reinforce those who have believed i will cast terror into the hearts of those who disbelieve so strike above their necks and strike every fingertip of theirs i'm taking you into context what happened on that fight so now let's go and see what was the victory chapter 3 verse 121 to 123 and when you departed from your family to assign the believers the stations to fight and God is hearing on omniscient. Verse 122. When two factions among you had intended to fail on that day, but God was their ally. And so let the believers rely on God. Verse 123. And God has certainly granted you victory at what? Badr. The Badr. For those who can read Arabic, you can check chapter 3 verse 123. God certainly granted you victory at what? Badr while you were subdued because the dream the prophet saw he saw his group that they were in lesser number and he saw the opponent in a bigger number but he was wishing that the dream he saw will be over 10 because sometimes you see dreams in a vice versa angle so he he was wishing that his group was the bigger number right but god actually in real life made the believers were in smaller number but god gave them victory because the angels supported them right so while you were subdued therefore beware of god so that you may be thankful now this is the history of Badr in the quran itself but the quran doesn't give you date but because it is a famous event in history you can actually research the date and you find it and i'm going to help you to find the date good 
just like today if we are if i mention september 11th to you if you go to bbc they have their own news version if you go to cnn they have their own version if you go to fox news they have their own version you might find something similar in all the news stations but something differs in whatever information they give you so similarly when it comes to the battle of Badr, you are not going to find the history the story outside the quran the quran gives you nothing but the truth woman as the communal haditha god is the one who can tell you the truth of what actually transpired in the past but the dates cannot be changed if you change any date in history you can be spotted for instance if i change september 11th and i said it happens on september 10th people will be laughing at me that history of the tragic event in ghana may 9th if i say may 10th people will be laughing at me history historic date cannot be changed similarly if i come out and i said i was born on this day and i mentioned the date and i say i'm born i was born on first april i cannot change it again the moment i come again i say oh it was actually 12th april people will be laughing at me do you see how it works so when it comes to date this is why quran doesn't deal with chronology it doesn't mention dates for you he left that for your own thing then he tells you the history so you can go and deduce and find the history event in the date now so now we can see what happened in Badr. How do we know Badr? Check the history of Badr. You type in Google for whoever is listening to me. Just check Badr, the Battle of Badr, on which date it happened. Now, the Battle of Badr was fought. If you go to the Common Era date, it happened on Tuesday, 13th of March, 624 in the Common Era year. Yeah, in the Common Era CE. Now, when you transfer that date to the Hijr calendar today, this Hijr calendar the Arabians are using today, which is 1440, is it 41 or 42, right? If you transfer it to that date, now, now, it happened huh? in the year 17th of Ramadan, second year of after Hijr. When we say Hijrah, that is when the Prophet left Mecca to Medina or let's say it's vice versa or he left medina to mecca right so that is after hijr the date started counting so which means when the prophet received al furqan they've already started using the calendar which has ramadan as a what can as a month on the calendar before the quran was revealed so that's why god says sharu ramadan lazi unzla fihi al-quran hudan linnas remember prophet muhammad became a prophet before he became a messenger there is no way you can be a messenger without a message with you to give to the people. That's why it says, Rasulu min Allah, yatulu suhu fa mutahara, fiha kutubun kayyima. So because he was a prophet, around people with him, at that time he doesn't have a physical book with him. So everything he received to tell them will be by inspiration till everything is written down. Before he can actually deliver it as a messenger. Do you see how it works? So when you take the date of history, the battle of Badr that God granted the believers the, the victory. If you check the history date, I'm not saying go and read what happened in the history. Because the Hadith books and other stories out there will lie to you what actually transpired. None can tell you the truth than God. Yes. So now, when you check the story in the Quran after checking, go and find the date. And you see which date you get. It happened, the battle of Badr had happened on 17th of Ramadan second year after hijr in the arabian calendar this modern calendar that you are seeing yes the modern calendar they are using now so if on that day god told us in chapter 8 verse 41 that prophet actually received the al furqan on that day which is part of the quran which tells us that muhammad salam, was receiving the quran during ramadan do you see the point here? So now, if you are going to mingle the Ramadan calendar, or the, the Hijr calendar, or the Arabian calendar, with the English calendar, you mess everything up. The Gregorian calendar we are using is based on solar. It's based on solar. The Arabian calendar the Arabs are using today is based on lunar. It is the moon. They didn't invent it after Muhammad. It shows us clearly here. 
Muhammad was there alive when the deed was there. It didn't start, the Hijr calendar didn't start after Muhammad. Alayhi salam. It was there before, uh, like, uh, like he was there at his time, not after him. Do you see my point? Good. So this is why people will tell you, oh, the Quran, uh, they, they use that date to tell you how long the Quran has been in existence. They will tell you 1,400 and something years. Do you understand the point? So now, by checking the date, the Quran gives you the actual history which happened on that day of that event. So the date says 17th of Ramadan, second year after Egypt. That is when Muhammad salam, received the Al-Furqan, according to chapter 8, verse 41. So where are these views also coming out, saying that, oh no, it cannot be the Ramadan, this month of Ramadan cannot happen in March or April. How come? Check here. The date Muhammad salam, received the Al-Furqan, here, 17th of Ramadan, second year after Egypt, converted to the common era year, and see in which month was it. In the English calendar, it will be 13th of March. So why are you surprised? Because when any time Ramadan happens, when you compare to the solar calendar, sometimes it's April, sometimes it's May, sometimes it's June. Yes, because they are not the same. We are using a lunar calendar for Ramadan. We are not using a solar calendar for Ramadan. Listen carefully. So when you go to the Arabian calendar, we have Muharram, we have Safar, we have Rabiul Awwal, Rabiul Thani, Jumad al Awwal, Jumad al Akhar, Rajab, Shaban, and then we are in Ramadan now, according to the Arabian calendar. Then we have Shawwal, then we have Zul Qadda, then we have Zul Hijjah. Similarly, if you go to the Chinese calendar, they have their own names. If you go to Gregorian calendar, they have their own names. If you go to the Mayan calendar, they have their own names. But how is it weird for you? Just because you are following Arabian calendar, you are like, no, 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 no. Why are we supposed to follow this calendar? This cannot be from God. Are you nuts? Abraham had his own calendar. Noah had his own calendar. Adam had his own calendar. Every human in existence in history had the calendar he used. If I ask you, which calendar was Noah using? Can you answer? No. Were you there at this time? No. Do you get my point? Salam, joy. Yes. So the Arabian calendar, since the Quran was revealed to an Arabian man, it's good to know the calendar at his time that he was using. Somebody will say, oh, how come they name the calendar according to the season? No. Are you dumb? Muharram, is it a season? The word Muharram, is it a season? Hello? Just because you see Rabiul Awal, Rabiul Thani, Jumad Al Awal, doesn't mean it is based on seasons. It is just a name. It can be given just like we have January to December. If I ask you, does, uh, does the word uh, uh, June, June, for instance, in Finland here, June is summertime. July is summertime. So what does the word June does to do with summer? Nothing. The word June, June. It was already given a name before Finland took it and started using June as a month here. I, I hope you are getting my point. Because I don't stress, I, I, like, I, it stresses me much when I see people who don't try to find knowledge. They will just take pieces of video somewhere and start saying rubbish. Saying, oh, how come we are doing this fasting with the, with the mushriks? What do you mean by that? If you are doing Salat al-Fajr, don't the mushriks also do Salat al-Fajr? If you are doing Salat al-Isha, the mushriks, don't they do Salat al-Isha? I don't get it. You understand? You are following guidance according to the Quran. You are not following guidance according to Sahih Bukhari or somebody's view. The Quran is to serve as a book of guidance. Yes, uh, Muqtabul is saying, Salam, you came late, so you have to catch up. Later, when you watch the program, I've already explained that. I cannot go back again and explain. So your question, I've already explained that in the beginning. So when you please have time to listen it after, you will get the meaning for yourself. Okay. Uh, let me check my time. Okay. I have about 15 minutes to go. Uh, so now I've explained to you the Arabian calendar being used today, which is 1442 years or how many years that calendar has been in existence that's why the the, the the this thing has been tracked it is used by lunar calendar it is not a solar calendar 
So stop converting that calendar into English calendar. Stop trying to say it has to be in September. Oh, it, should not, it should not change. Why did it change? It has to always be the same. No, no, no. It doesn't work that way. No. Stop converting the Arabian calendar into the Gregorian calendar. They don't match. This one is solar. That one is lunar. Yes. Uh-huh. So, <clears throat> the count of months, according to God, since God created the heavens and earth, he gave 12 months. The 12th month, Adam had his own. Noah had his own. Abraham had his own. Everyone has his own. You understand? Everyone has his own. But it's just that God helps to pinpoint to you. But the way, the only way you can know the right one is when you are following the messenger of the Quran, since he existed and he used a calendar, you have to abide by that calendar. That is what is going to help you in order to serve God. Because if messenger was say, God says, Chapter 33 verse 21. God says there has been a good pattern for you in the messenger of God. Now then you ask yourself, did the messenger of God use the calendar being used today? Yes, he used. Yes, he used. So if you are following the example of this messenger, what stop you from using the same calendar to do your Ramadan, your fasting, your Siam? What stop you? What? What is stopping you? If you, saw, if you say anybody out there who said Muhammad السلام, never used this calendar, Please let him find me for a live dialogue and prove to us which calendar did Muhammad use. He should come out and prove to us which calendar did Muhammad السلام, use to observe Ramadan. I'm waiting. Now, chapter 9 verse 36 says, Indeed, the period of months, hmm, the number or period of months with God are 12 months. Then God says, in the book of God, that is in the register of God. Right? Then God says, since the day he created the heavens and the earth. Then he says, four are sacred. Ashur Four of the months are sacred. Now this sacred, some of my lectures have already explained. If you combine chapter 9 verse 1 to verse 2, and chapter 9 verse 28, and chapter 9 verse 5, you will understand the four months. It is a consecutive month. This is why the first month of the Arabian calendar is called Muharram. When you start counting from what Ramadan, Shawwal, Zulkada, Zulhija, you have four months. So when we say sacred months, out of the four months, if you don't know the actual calendar Muhammad salam used, you can never know the sacred months, right? So the, the the verses I quoted is to help you to know the four sacred months Muhammad used. So God actually mentioned Ramadan. The month of Ramadan, which is the ninth month of the Arabian calendar, so that me and you can be able to pinpoint the four sacred months on a row because they are consecutive. So this is why the first month says Muharram, because when the year ends, it becomes Muharram. That is when the uh, Mushriks were forbidden to come to the Masjid al-Haram because God awarded that place to Muhammad and his, the believers. Do you get my point? According to chapter 48, verse 24 to verse 27. The answer is there. Do you see the point? Good. Yeah. Yes, Mufasir. Salim wanted to be part of the show by force, you know. Yeah. And that's why he came to say hi. Yes. So, by the way, when we first, when you say we have four sacred months, it starts with Ramadan. So, when you check chapter 20, uh, chapter 2, verse 183, and read downwards to 180, what, 9, it gives you the clue on how the months were arranged. He started talking about Ramadan. After Ramadan, he started talking about Hajj downwards. Right? So, start with Ramadan, Shawwal, Zulkada, and Zulhijjah. Four months consecutively. That is the four months God gave the disbelievers to roam the earth without any fight. Chapter 9, verse 1 to verse 2. Chapter 9, verse 28. And chapter 9, verse 5. Right? Uh -huh. So, we have Ramadan. Then we have Shawwal. Then we have Zulkada. Then we have Zulhijjah. Right? So Ramadan is the first of the four sacred months God has given in the Quran. Because what, what is sacred? Sacred is anything we have actually dedicated it to God. So it is a month we observe to dedicate it to God. Because your piousness is only solely for God. Yes. So we dedicate a month to God. That is Ramadan. 
So after Ramadan, God mentioned that name of that month to help you pinpoint the calendar. Show me one calendar on earth which has a month called Ramadan apart from the Arabian calendar. Please help me. Show me one calendar you have on this earth which has the name Ramadan on, in, on that calendar apart from the Arabian calendar we are using. Show me. You don't have any. Do you get my point? Good. So now this is to help you to pinpoint the month for people who are bringing it down, telling you, oh, Ramadan has nothing to do with what the Arabs are doing. Please seek knowledge. Please, please seek knowledge. Quran chapter 33 verse 21 says there is a message, an example, a good example in the messenger of God for you to follow. So don't follow your desires, your opinions. Don't do that. Right? Find people who, who have more knowledge than you do to it actually enlighten you on it. Right? So when you go to chapter 2, verse 184, let me help you with this before I bring my topic to an end. Chapter 2, verse 184. If people ask you, so how many days are we supposed to fast? Or how many days are we supposed to do the, uh, the siyam in the month of Ramadan? God says, ayam and ma'adudat. He didn't say ayam and ma'alumat. He didn't say ma'alumat. He says ayam and ma'adudat. Now when we say ma'adudat, there are few number of days. Few number of days. Why is it few number of days? So from the time I will spot the moon, Till the time I will spot the crescent, the waning crescent, that is the waxing crescent and the waning crescent. I might do 20 days, 26 days, 27 days. You might do 28 days, 29 days, 30 days. That's up to you. Same way goes with charity. If I have 1 million and you have 100, just 100 euro and I have 1 million euros, the way I'm going to give charity is not the same way you are going to give charity. I might choose to give somebody more money. And you might choose to give something less. That is according to your capability. Right? So God says, whoever witnesses the month among you, then let him fast it. So if I have witnessed the month at the, at the hour, or maybe on Friday, the moon, on Friday, or on Thursday, that is when I start my fasting. If you have spotted it today, good luck. Start it today. Because you have witnessed the month. You see how it goes. So in chapter 2, verse 184, God says, Ayam in Madudad, which means it's not fixed. It's not a fixed number. But after I spot the crescent, which means my Ramadan will start the next day. Since I will start fasting Ramadan, God says, Faman kena minkum. You see again, Faman kena minkum. Maridon. Au ala safar. Then he says, Faiddatu min ayam in ukhar. Then whoever among you is sick, that is, you are ill. Even though you have seen them, the, the, you have seen the crescent, and you know it is the month of Ramadan, you have witnessed it, and you are sick. Then God says, "Aw Allah suffering," or you are traveling, because if I'm traveling from Australia to Africa, I might be in the sky, and it might be night time or daytime. And the moment I reach the next day to another country, it might be night time there, so I might be confused. So God says, "No, don't do it." Then He says, "What?" While are suffering, then he says, for it that too, and yam in okar. Then you have to do a number of other days. He didn't say same days. God didn't say you should equal the number of days. He says other days. So which means if I've missed three days due to traveling and sick, I'm not supposed to compensate anything. Because you are sick or you traveled. Do you understand? Aha, uh -huh. that is that there is no compensation on that. You only do the days ahead of you. Let's say I'm traveling for three days. I will miss three days. The other days in front of me, I can fast. Let's say I'm sick for one week. I don't have to pay for anything. The other days in front of me, then because remember, it is due to a month. A month is a long month. Right? If it is count collect correctly, it can be 29 or 30 days of a month. Right? So during that month, if I'm sick, I'm exempted. If I'm traveling, I'm exempted. There's no burden on me. Apart from that, then God says, Wa ala lazina Upon those who will struggle, who will suffer, you will do it, but you will suffer. Then God says what? Fidia to to'am and miskin. Now when we say fidia, this fidia to is a ransom. Now the moment the word ransom comes in, which means it's not compulsory anymore, which means I can do fasting, but I will struggle. I'll be, you know, I'll face fatigue. So now God says, I should ransom, compensate by feeding a poor person. 
So what do I have to do? I have to ransom the day that I cannot fast. Maybe due to the place I am, the sun will not set. Night time will not come. How can I fast now? So I have to what? Ransom it by feeding a poor person. Maybe on that day I'm doing a heavy job. My boss will not give me an off day. I'll be struggling. I have to ransom that day to feed the poor. Do you see how it goes? So similarly, ransom here stands for, let's say I break your phone. You have an iPhone or something and I broke your phone. How do I ransom? I just need to pay you the same amount of money and pay you and say, okay, here, take. How much does it cost? You say one million, take one million. I compensate you. I don't need to go to the shop to buy the same phone for you. No. Do you see how it works? So this is feed here to Ta'am and Miskin. You ransom by feeding a poor person. That is if you struggle from fasting. If you cannot fast and you are struggling. It doesn't mean if you are sick. It doesn't mean if you are traveling. That is not that. He says, It is people who suffer. Who will endure struggling with it. You do the ransom. Then God says, فَمَنْ تَتَوَّعَ خَيْرًا فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ Whoever will volunteer a good, to do good in that month, during that month, then it is good for you. Then God says, وَأَنْتَ سُومُوا But if you should observe the fast, the abstinence, if you should observe it, then God says what? خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ That will be better for you. If you should observe it. Then God says, إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ That is, if you know. Because observing it gets you closer to piousness. You get the point. Hey, salam. Allah Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. So now we have seen in chapter 2, verse 184. There is nothing like, oh, I missed three days, so I have to pay for it. I have to wait. After the Ramadan, I have to do three days. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Thousand times no. God never said you should compensate that those days you missed. If you can't do it, ransom. Simple. Ransom for it, feed a poor person if you can't. Simple. If you are sick, you are exempted. If you are traveling, you have been exempted. You just need to do other deeds in front of you. Because it is a full month. That is why God says, Ayam and Ma'adudat. Ayam and Ma'adudat means limited number of days, few number of days. It doesn't mean Ayam and Ma'alumat like fixed number it's not a fixed number you have to fast so listen carefully good so now to top it all i'm going to end but we let's end with chapter 2 verse 187 chapter 2 verse 187 let's see what god says in that uh verse god says then he says then uh let us see rafasu ilad nisaikum God says, now, in that night of fasting, lawful for you is the night of abstinence. When we say abstinence, that is you are abstaining, not, you are not only abstaining from food and water, you are abstaining from even sex with your wives. Anything that can make you last after your wife, during the hours of what? Abstinence. You have to avoid it. That, is, that shows your piousness to God. That shows how, like, God fearing you can be in such, uh, you know, times. So lawful for you is the ninth of what? Siam. A siam to last after your wife. So because at the night time you've already broken your fast. They are a covering for you and you are a covering for them. So God says what? Libasun lakum wa antum libasun lahunna. Lahun. So you are a covering because we and our wives, we have each other's secrets and we see each other. Whether naked or not naked. We see each other. We know each other's secret. This is how it goes. So, libasun lakum wa antum libasun lahunna. Then God says, Alim allahu annakum kuntum taktanuna anfusakum fataba alaykum wa afa ankum. So, God says here, this, is, this part is interesting. God says, they are a covering for you and you are a covering for them. God knows that you had been what? Cheating yourselves. Cheating yourselves. It didn't say teaching with uh, cheating somewhere. No. Cheating yourselves means a person can be practicing siyam, abstinence, right? So let's see. Let's say he goes to the shower. He comes out. Maybe his wife sees, his na sees him naked. Or maybe he sees his wife naked. What do you think he'll be thinking? 
something goes up in the mind right now these are what people do to themselves just like when you tell a kid don't touch this food the moment you tell him don't touch he can smell it he can see it so since he can smell it he can see it he's cheating himself because when you turn your back he might touch it he will touch it and hide so similarly we have people who pretend they are doing abstinence siam they hide and eat they are cheating themselves there are people we have people who are practicing siam they might hide and kiss a girl he's cheating himself so god of all people tells you god knows that you had been cheating yourselves so he has forgiven you and has pardoned you do you get my point as a human being you are supposed to practice abstinence in order to get piousness because chapter 2 verse 183 God has decreed kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba ala allazina min qablikum la allakum tattaqun so that you may attain piousness now with the piousness he knows not everybody can keep up with this piousness we have people who cheat their own selves even though they think they are doing god you are doing it to yourselves the the uh, the siyam is supposed to help you to become pious towards god so we have people who can tell you, oh, I'm fasting, but they go home and eat. If I'm not fasting today, I have to show you that I'm not fasting. How can I be hypocritical? Do you get my point? Good. So now, here in this verse, chapter 2, verse 187, God says, so complete with them now. He has given you permission in the night. So instead of the daytime that you are fasting, don't touch them. Don't kiss them. Don't go and eat. Don't go and drink. Don't go and hide and do something immoral. So now God has given you permission in the night. So complete with them now and seek what God has decreed for you. So now the fasting is going to start. Now, the night time you can eat, you can drink, you can have sex, you can do what you want. Listen carefully. So now he says, and eat and drink until the whitish thread becomes clear to you from the blackish thread of dawn. It's not talking about the thread for sewing clothes. The thread of the sky at night time. If it is about to get to dawn time, you can see the thread of the clouds, the way the thread goes. You can see the difference between white clouds and black clouds. Right? That is to help you differentiate between dawn and night. So God says, and eat and drink until the whitish thread becomes clear to you from the blackish thread of dawn. So which means you have to stop eating and drinking at dawn. You have to stop anything sexual, lasting, anything at dawn. Stop it. Now, then God says, then conclude the abstinence at night. So this abstinence, you are abstaining from sex, food, water, any other act, lasting act. You conclude it at night. So which means at night again, it is lawful for you to go and last after your wives, to go and eat, to go and drink, to go and do anything your heart desires. But it doesn't mean go and do criminal acts, if you get my point. So, God says, and eat and drink until the whitish thread becomes so. This is what he says in Arabic. He says, Wakulu wa shurabu hatta tabayyan alakum khaytul abiyadu min al khaytul aswadi min al fajr. Then he says, Thumma atimu siyama ila al layl. This is what God says. Now, atimu, the word atimu here is to conclude, to complete. You conclude the asiyam, the abstinence, the abstinence at what? Ilalay, at night. He didn't say at sunset, ilal maghrib. Listen carefully. Quran is talking to people who possess intelligence. God never says ilal maghrib or ilal gurub. He never said that. He says ilal what? Layl. There's a difference between night and sunset. There is a big difference between night and and sunset night time is the darkness hour go to chapter 92 when layli is a yagasha when layli is a is the time that the darkness have covered huh? yagasha let's say i'm sitting right now if i use the cloth to cover myself it become dark that is darkness hour right but the darkness have its own time of starting so when you go to chapter 17 verse 78 he says, Akimi salata liduluki shams ila gasaki layl. To gasaki layl, for instance, we have civil twilight, nautical twilight, astronomical twilight. So the astronomical twilight is the closest twilight to the night time. 
but nautical and civil twilight they are still light in the sky you understand so the twilight the last twilight before the night time that is what gives you the hint of the night time so astronomical whoever knows about um uh, like weather forecast you can read it out for yourself and you know the understanding thereof uh-huh so then god says but do not after that, that he says but do not copulate with them while you are abiding in the mosque don't go linking up with your, your women while you are abiding in the mosque because for instance the mosque is made for us to go and worship god so both men and women can go to the mosque to serve god so you don't go mingling with them you understand whilst you are abiding in the mosques these are the limits of god so do not approach them do you see then god says god does clarify his verses to the people perhaps they will become what pious because that is the the main purpose of fast uh, the siam in order to become pious so if you know the criteria that God has explained concerning piety, how to become pious, you need to abide by the limits God has set forth for us, if you get my point. So ladies and gentlemen, this is where I need to drop this topic. So for, for people who didn't see, who didn't watch from the beginning, find time to listen from the beginning. I gave all the evidences and the answers concerning what people normally don't understand concerning uh, uh, the, the Ramadan. Huh? Salam, when you wake up, I need a necklace. Salam, Salam, Salam needs, needs, needs the necklace. We can need a necklace. Back and it go. Mm, Salam, yeah. Salam says no. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you very much, my sister Benish Ansari. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Tahir. I appreciate your support. So, to bring this to an end, uh, you should always know that the, the fasting you are going to do, the siam, the abstinence, it's always pertaining to the crescent moon and the waning. Uh, that is a waxing crescent and the waning crescent. So if I spot the, the waxing crescent in Finland today or tomorrow, I'll start the fasting the next day. This is how it works. If I don't see it, I wait till a better time. When I see it, I start. That's the same way I've been doing in Finland, right? So when I see it, I start. That's how it works. So when you see it, you start your, your, your siyam. If you are sick, don't do it. If you are traveling, don't do it. But if you can do it, but you struggle, then that is when you feed somebody. So for instance, if you are based in Norway, Sweden, Finland, Denmark, and maybe the sun will not set and night time doesn't come, that is when you can decide to feed somebody. Simple. God is not forcing anybody here. So let's learn some knowledge and not to pursue what we do not know. Anything you do in the religion, make sure you know it before you practice it. Because you look stupid and ignorant when you are practicing something you don't know. So I've given all the evidences. For people who haven't uh, gotten to watch the beginning, try to find time later and watch from the beginning. And for people who have questions for further clarifications, you can inbox me and when I have time, I'll answer. And I apologize for people who I couldn't answer on time because I've been busy. So when I find time, some of your questions, I'll find time to answer. And these are some of the questions people have asked me. So I decided to do a full lecture and then give the chance for people to understand. Right? Uh -huh. So time is not on my side. I will have just opened up the space for people to ask more questions so that I can answer them. But inshallah, during this Ramadan lesson, I might have another time to explain further some issues on pertaining uh, the Ramadan and the fasting, right? So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate your time and support. Uh, Sister Al-Bashiru, salam. Thank you. Uh, Cliff Hegman, yes, I've seen you. Thank you. Uh, Mood Hussein, thank you very much. Uh, Mawia Naganka, thank you. Thank you all uh, for coming. Uh, Alma Johnson, yeah, Tujis. Tofik Naganka, blessed day. Yeah. Benish Ansari, salam. Baba Sidu, Salis. Kuduka sister Rashida Naga Kuduka. Salam alaikum. Thank you very much. Salim Imusu Epa. Epa. Imusu Epa man. Eh eh. Basupusu. Yes. Epa.